Boom. Everyone, everyone, what's up with it? It's your man Darren M. Palmer with my main man Jose Contreras on the on the scene today for the author spotlight. You know how we do it. This is not your formal occasion. Guess what, Cinderella? You're not at the ball with your little ratchet looking self. This is the author spotlight, my people. This is where we go behind the scene with best selling authors, those who are change agents, those who are planet shakers, who are shaking the industry up. And when I talk about a planet shaker, I'm talking about the real McCoy tonight. I'm talking to my main man, Jose Contreras. I don't have to ask people if this dude is real. I know this dude right here is real. I mean, this is what we say back in the day. This is before I got my degree and all that. He keep it 50 150, you know what I'm saying? He 50, you know what I'm saying? That's what he is. Excuse that southern vernacular there, but Jose is a great individual who proceeds to make a difference in his community. He's loyal, he's faithful, he's a great guy. I just want to let you know that he's educated, and more than that, he pours his heart out into whatever he does and he's there for change. Okay, for all those intellectuals out there, I had to put that out there for y'all. But this is the author spotlight. I just want to go a little bit in detail and share about Jose. Uh, for those who don't know Jose, Jose Contreras grew up in the south side of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He is the son of a hardworking woman from Mexico. He's a loving, uh, he's, Jose, let me get the stuff right. He's a loving woman from Mexico. A loving father from Mexico as well. Growing up on the south side of Milwaukee, Jose witnessed gangs, crime, violence that led him to develop into a leader and protect and serve his community. It's more about Jose. Also, he's a graduate from St. Thomas. Um, is that Moore High School? Correct. He his bachelor's degree in criminal justice in 2009 from the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, UWM, and returned to UWM to earn his master's degree in administrative leadership with a concentration in adult and continuing education leadership in 2016. I just want to allow Jose to come on in. Jose, I shared a little bit about your bio, but if you could for the audience, could you go a little bit more in detail and sharing about your bio and some of the things that you have going on right now? Yeah, so I'm from, as you mentioned, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I'm also, I created my, my own podcast called Decoding Millennials, awesome. where I empower, educate, and debunk the myth of millennials, mm. because when it comes to the word millennial, uh, a lot of people for different generations have, a, different, have a, uh, a negative meaning towards us, and I feel as though, you know, we are the hardest working generation out there who wants something different and making changes and challenging people to do things differently. So I'm the host of Decoding Millennials podcast. I drop an episode every Wednesday and, you know, to educate and empower my, my generation and also debunk that there are other millennials out there who are being creative, who are being effective leaders in the community. Awesome, 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 Jose. And when you're talking about being a leader in the community, Jose, for how many years have you been doing this? Because when I hear you, when I see the movement that you have, some people don't believe me when I share with them how long you've been doing this. But I just want to debunk the myth right now. You're talking about debunking the myth of millennials. Could you share a little bit as far as this entrepreneurial part of what you're doing? Could you share with the audience how long you've been doing this? So for me, like I'm 31 years old. You know, the entrepreneurial spirit was in me for a long time since I was born. And I think I, I unlocked it in 2012 when mm -hmm. I started to discover who I was and also understanding my identity. And in, in 2016, that's when I started to unlock a, a little by little of, of the entrepreneurial spirit a little bit more and challenging it and, and discovering who I was and walking to my purpose. Mm. Okay, 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 that's real good. And now, now the numbers do lie. The numbers do lie. I don't want to hold that up from anybody. I just want to just point that out. I got my copy right now, you know. And so the numbers do lie. Why this book, though, Jose? I mean, you got a, you got a background. You could have talked about your parents coming to this country. You could have talked about, you know, gang violence. I mean, you could have talked about, you know, a plethora of things. Why the numbers do lie? You know, I, I share my education, like my, the failures in my education and personal life, and I talk about the principles that I use to bounce back to, uh, to be the person I am today. For example, I'm a first-generation Latino who is an author, podcast mm -hmm. host. I have my master's degree. I moved to a different state to advance in my career. But the thing is, I feel so much in my education 
in my personal life, but in my education, I flunked third grade. I did horrible my ICT twice, where I scored a 15 the first time, a 14 the second time. I barely got into college, and I barely graduated with my, uh, graduated with my bachelor's degree. So I really had to make a big turnaround to figure out, you know, the, to who I was and how do I walk in my purpose. If I would have believed the times that I failed in my life, I would not be the person I am today. Exactly. Exactly. Man, I, I really appreciate you sharing that. For so many, they think one bump in the road, one tragedy, one traumatic issue, as we witnessed in Houston, one flood, what happened in Puerto Rico, that some people think that's the end. But mm -hmm. it's like yours give other people hope, and they too can make it, Jose. Yeah, and also too, like I'm not the best, I'm not the brightest, but I had to change my mentality to be who I am today. And it wasn't easy, but these principles that I have in the book really shaped and put me in check to be in the right direction. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And when you're talking about the right direction, I want to, let's look at it a little bit deeper because we're going behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. I want to look at it. Some people are wondering, how do you, you know, how in the hell do you do it, Jose? I know you know, to be honest, I, I think the first step is believing yourself. You know, I mentioned before I failed a lot in my education. And also, you know, the failures in my education was a big cloud over my head. Mm -hmm. and, it, and I let it define my future. And I looked at it as like, you know what? It's time for that change. I had to believe in myself that I'm able to, 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 to create my future now and not let my past define my future. So wow. that's why I said I, that that's the direction is believing in myself, knowing who I was, knowing what I want, and knowing where I had to go. Mm. And let's look at the transition because you have did – a brilliant job of switching lanes. And what I mean by switching lanes, what, what some people don't know, we're going behind the scenes here. For some of you, I know you tuned into the podcast, but we're going behind the scenes. You have watched this man overcome a lot. And I'm not just talking about the early part of his life in the third grade scenario. Let's just bring it up to date around the beginning of 2017, This man was do finishing up his master's degree, he was writing a book at the same time. He was uh, preparing to propose to his now fiance and future wife here in a little bit. He was transitioning from moving from Milwaukee to Chicago, starting a new position. At the same time, he started a company. At the same time, he had all of this stuff going on. Now, okay, that's just a little bit of a snippet. And some, like, some of you say, like, damn, what the hell is going on? I thought that was more than enough. No. Now he switched from getting the book out, doing speaking engagements, and now all of a sudden we got decoding millennials. So let's just look at that a little bit. What is going on in that mind of yours for you to keep tackling? Are, are you a good for punishment or what? What allows for you to keep higher and higher and higher and going after bigger and bigger game and goals, Jose? I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I know that I had to do before I leave this earth. I know I had to leave everything behind. For example, the, one of the reasons I create, wrote the book, because there's so many students out there who are struggling in their academics and not sure how they can move forward. There's a lot of millennials out there who are having a career crisis or thinking suicide, suicidal thoughts and not sure if they, if they should continue. I went through that, and that's one of the reasons I wrote the book and keep on pushing. And with the you know, decoding millennials is that I want to create this network and this movement of my generation, like, hey, yes, a lot of people don't, people, a lot of people don't understand us, but at the end of the day, they got to love us. Wow, wow. And that's it. I, I love how you're debunking the myth that millennials are hard workers, you know, and every group, every generation have people that don't work or, or that, that, you know, you should find unemployed or not trying to move to a higher level. So you can't group or classify one group of people as one thing because you're being narrow-minded. Would you say the same, Jose? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, you know, when we look at this decoding millennials, why, I know you're saying because of the lie and debunking the myth, what have you learned from decoding millennials? Because me personally, everything that I create, even though I'm doing it for one reason, I find that it's fruitful in so many other areas of my life because just like right now, when I'm here with you, I'm learning. Mm -hmm. I, I, just, I just learned about a new camera, uh, 
Uh, I've did three or four interviews a day for different shows. In every show, I'm constantly learning. You know, I'm the host, but I'm learning on every show. So what have you gleaned uh, since starting Decoding Millennials by some of the people that you've had come on? I've learned that each, you know, each person has their story and it has their own path. And I've learned that we want something different and we are not afraid to create that path. But there are some out there who are unsure how to make that move, you know, and that's why I come in to bring in these information and stories to, to change the perspective of the listeners to go after what they want. You know, and that's why I bring in these millennials and also different guests with these uh, expertise that there are so many people out there who want information. And by being that middleman to bring in these people in, um, I'm able to be an effective leader and pour into these people in their current situation. Oh, wow. Wow. I mean, and I want to stop right there and just I want the audience to understand some of the things that Jose is sharing. And I don't want y'all to take get this twisted. Don't look at this as a cookie cutter store. You know, don't look at this as a guy who had a platinum spoon in his mouth. This is a gentleman who he's worked for. I'm talking about work, grind, sweat, blood, tears. This man puts it on the line every day. So I want us to understand that this, this was some of the stuff that you hear about him, what I just explained. Some of those traits you would think, oh, that must have been the baby boomers generation. Oh, you might, you would have never associated what I just shared about him and his work ethic with a millennial. This is why it's so imperative that we understand we must debunk the myth of letting people put labels on us that's untrue. Because Jose chose to say, you know what? You can't put me in a box. You mm -hmm. can't tell me that I don't have a work ethic. You can't tell me because i am come over here, or my family come over into this country, that I can't be X or I can't be Z. I can't be this. I can't be that. He debunked the myth. He didn't say, you know what? He could have been a victim. It's a lot of people that came from the same neighborhood that Jose came from. And guess what? They're on the other side of, 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 of society. They behind bars and some of them are dead right now. Mm -hmm. Same situation now. Same, they still, some of them might have come, not come from the same kind of background, but some of them had loving families, but they still got caught up in the environment. I want you to look at the environment that Jose put himself around. I want you to look at his work ethic. I want you to look at the hunger that he has to continue to get better. Most of us would have just said, well, you know what? I brought a guy out of high school. That's it. Mm -hmm. Most of us would have said, well, you know what? I got a bachelor's. I did better than what my parents did. Oh, it's over for me. Most people say, oh, my goodness, a master's. And why in the hell would I get my dream job with Jose Cray's ass? You know what I'm saying? He get his dream job, move, and guess what he started to do? He going to be an entrepreneur. He's <laughs> that loco. You know what I'm saying? Y'all didn't know I was polishing up on my Spanish. <laughs> you didn't know I was polishing up on my Spanish tonight. Okay, what the hell y'all talking about? Yes, we're talking about the loco Jose, <laughs> my compadre from around the way. You know what I'm saying? So I want you to understand that. But don't, now, just, all jokes aside, you might think it's crazy. But I'm telling you, when you're going after your greatness, when you're going after being phenomenal, when you're reaching your full potential, that's why the same thing that you hear you see in Jose is the same thing that you have with a Tyler Perry. Why wouldn't he stop with just the chitlin' circuit? Mm -hmm. Why would he him think that he could have his own, uh, his, his own production studio? And if you're going to do a production studio, you got to go to L.A. because that's where all the production studios are. But he chose to go to Atlanta. So I want you to understand the characteristic of change agents and planet shakers and realize that what you're witnessing right here is a young man that just like Tyler Perry had his start, just like Warren Buffett bought his first stop, just like those who are excelling to higher heights and new levels, they started somewhere. But the mindset that he has is that what I want the author spotlight audience to get is the mindset of hunger. It's more in me. Okay, that's cool for you. There's some people that work beside him in a cubicle that is just fine for them to be where they are right now, which is nothing wrong with that for them. But for him, he knows that his greatness awaits. He knows that he's moving from ordinary lane to extraordinary drive. And you have to make up the decision in your mind that you are going to move there too. And on that note, Jose, share with the audience because you've written one book. 
those who follow you a little bit know that you're writing another book. Mm -hmm. Share with them, after all the stuff that I just shared that you're doing, they already know that you're local, okay? <laughs> so how are you doing how are you doing the writing process with everything else that you have? You're recording the podcast. You got to go to work. You got other stuff. You got to got speaking engagements. You got a woman is in your life. Bless your heart. You see, you got all that going. You blessed, boy. You blessed. You blessed. Yes, yes, you blessed. <laughs> but so you got all that that you got to handle now that you didn't yeah. have at first. You didn't no. have, you, you know, your fiance there and you got to take in consideration her time and what she needs and that's true her family all that so how are you doing your writing process now different from what you did last time i i think that i had to kind of dig in back like finding that other why you know build, creating a different why you know like you know I, I forgot to mention before is that you know my mom came from the states you know at the age of 19 not a word of english and, you know, she's, you know, she, she's an entrepreneur. She's very successful, you know, but, you know, everything she's done. And my thing is I, I owe it to her and there's no reason why I should not be successful because she's done a lot of work. Mm -hmm. But now that it was the second part of this process of the book is that I had to be more effective of my to-do list. I'm big on a to-do list to keep me on track. Yes, I'm beyond busy. But at the same time, what's important to me? Why do I need to get this book, the second book out? Again, why? So the thing is because someone out there needs me. So right. that person's need is really pushing me to get myself out there again. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I want to write a book. I want to write a book. Girl, you've been talking about writing a book for the longest now. Like, really? You still talking about that? And it, and it pisses me off. I'm like, sorry, just get to it. <laughs> I'm not the best. I'm not the brightest. But at the same time, like, just write one chapter or, you know, one sentence, whatever, whatever it is, because once you start writing it out, you know, you make it more concrete. Like I need to get this done. Yes, so it. for me to keep on pushing is that someone out there is waiting for me. And also for my mom to be, you know, to, to take the torch from her and to keep on moving forward. Like, Hey, my mom worked so hard, worked so hard for my family. You know what? It's my time to shine for her and to, to, to pass it on. So when I have a family, there when you I go. have a family that I have this blueprint for them, just like my mama did for me. Wow, man! I mean, that is so awesome, man. That's so awesome. And did you? you did, I want y'all to get that. Somebody is waiting on you. On you. That's the why. That's the big why. And and uh, and and Jose, understand this. I look at it me personally. Who would have ever thought this country ass dude? <laughs> So many lives. You see what I'm saying? I mean, you hear me, they be like, how the hell is he a publisher? You know, but the thing is, is that it doesn't matter what anybody thinks. Yeah. But he walking in my purpose. Like, mm -hmm. you don't have to be the smartest. You don't have to be the brightest. But if yeah. you take those steps, if you keep grinding, if you keep evolving, if you keep focusing on and persevering through the obstacles, guess what? Not only will your life change, but you will affect and have a ripple effect to so many. When I wrote my book, I would have never known that me writing my book would have helped so many people and the skill set that I learned would have helped so many people because I really was just writing it just like, okay, I need to be an expert in this area. That's what I thought it was about. Until I seen an overwhelming response, I'm like, wow, this knowledge and some of the things that I struggled with and that I wrote down and I journaled, I said, now I can create a system to be able to help facilitate and help others as well. And I'm just looking at that too, the same thing with you. We got that connection with our mothers. And I'm looking at, at my mom like, okay, mom, you know, it's my time now. I mm -hmm. have a mom. So, I, I mean, this is, you know, I mean, you're preaching to the choir right now because that resonates with me, what you're saying, because that's why I don't mind doing four or five interviews in a day. That's why I don't mind putting out so much content and doing the work. And I want the audience to know tonight, you have to think about this, and this is not for you to start shooting messages to me and getting mad about. What are, what are you willing to do because it's your time? Mm -hmm. Oh, they said it was his time. His mama had her time. You mm -hmm. know, his family had their time for him. My, same thing with my family. Now, what are you going to do for those who coming from behind you or those who need you currently right now? Right now. And, and I'm going to dig in this a little bit deeper, too. I'm going to dig in this a little bit deeper. You know, Jose, how do you handle this thing 
when things don't go right. In our process, we had, well, we had to repurpose some of the content. Uh, we had where well, some errors that we had to correct. We had, we had to go through some different things. You had to go and speak. Well, you weren't even a speaker, and people called you to speak. So I want you to share with people. Everybody want to, uh, well, a lot of people want to be an entrepreneur. A lot of people want to be the head honcho. But I want you to deal with those some of those stress factors yeah. and how you kept going on. Because you could have whined, you could have cried, but you had to get yourself together and overcome when it wasn't so perfect. And so many people think that everything is perfect. So how have you handled some of the stress that comes along with being a CEO? You know, the one thing is that I pray for this and it had to be ready to accept it. And also I have to understand the whole process. It's like you say, you want to be an entrepreneur. And it's funny though, because it's a different world. Yeah. And you have to understand there are sacrifices, there's stress, there's health risks and all that. Yep. But at the end of the day, why are you doing it? There you go. You know? there so that, so you're going back to the why and just and pushing me to, yes, when I'm stressed, I had to kind of take a step back and realize what can I, what can I control? Because yeah. I cannot focus on the things I cannot control because it'll put more stress on me. Mm -hmm. So I can't be tripping now and just do the best I can and what I can provide. And like I said, I'm not an expert of, of you know, being a writer or whatever, but at the end of the day, I, I want to put myself out there. Yes. Because if I keep on waiting for that perfect moment, it's never going to happen. If I would have waited for my podcast to get the right equipment, <laughs> man, I would have missed opportunities. <laughs> you know, but the thing is, if you don't know something, if you're unsure, ask. Open your mouth. You have it, use it. That's it. That's it, man. Wow. Use it, use it. And stop waiting for a perfect time. It mm -hmm. will never be a perfect time. You know what? I got some people right now, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. I got some people who got, I know some people who got books out. They saw, they, I think they might have saw three errors in the book. There wasn't even a big deal in the book. You know they haven't even been selling the book. They've been sitting there for months with the book done, and they haven't even sold the book. They just said, I'm like, what? Man, I'm reading John Maxwell books right now. I'm finding errors in. I'm I'm reading the Hollandwell book. I'm reading great authors. I'm talking about people who sell more than we probably will ever could even imagine them thinking about selling, and they still got errors in the book. The yeah. book is about leverage and the content. Stop whining and crying. Guess what? Your podcast right now. We're doing the show. Do you know that this is something that keeps coming through the uh, the audio? Like, shh, shh. Yeah. I don't give a damn. We yeah. still shooting the show, baby. Because yeah. you learn and keep on going. You keep on going because guess what? When people hear it, they're gonna say, "Man, that was a kick-ass interview." Hey, yeah. thank you for the content y'all shared. See, we overthink stuff. That the real true audience that's looking for you, they don't even care about all that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That is true. I mean, and we want it the best as possible. We want to do a great job. I'm not saying we're here to be slackers, but I'm yeah. just saying give yourself the luxury, give yourself the grace to know like it's okay. Yeah. I, I can tweak this later on. I, I can come back and get this lined up. You know, this ain't it's not the end of the world. It doesn't mean that I need to stay on the bench. And by the way. Before we go any further with this interview, I want to give congrats to Jose, and I want to show y'all how real the behind the scenes is, because the questions that I gave him, I didn't even ask him that on the interview today. <laughs> <laughs> the questions that my staff sent over, I didn't even ask those questions, because I've got a relationship with this man, and I knew this is why this is behind the scenes. And then I'm able to pour out what you really need to hear with the current, for those who heard the podcast, that was one Jose. Mm -hmm. It's been a drastic change. Oh yeah. Jose who we're seeing before us right now. So I dare cheat you or cheat him from getting the experience to hear the nuggets and gems that he's encountered. So this is not a watered down thing. You heard real raw, authentic, entrepreneur, grind, real life, what really matters, his real wise on this interview today. And I, but I do want to leave with this, Jose. Would you share with the audience more about you, how they can benefit from your coaching, 
your packages, uh, where they can find more information about you, your podcast, mm. uh, hashtag, I mean, you know, handles on social media, the whole nine. Yeah, so on Instagram, you can follow me at Decoding Millennials and also on Facebook, De uh, Decoding Millennials Podcast. And if you want to reach out to me, it's uh, at Gmail. So it's dmpodcast17 at gmail.com. And for for the job hunters, job hunters out there, okay. uh, you know, if you're struggling to find your purpose, if you're struggling on mastering the job hunt, or if you're struggling to get multiple job offers, um, you know, I'm I, I'm going to help you out to 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 leverage that to to, to find that position and the career that you want to build, because I believe that you know we like we, you, you don't want to work for 30 years for at a job that you hate. I want to help you to create that and build that that career that you want. That's it, man. That's it. I mean, and, and please take advantage of this. I can't tell you how many people who are struggling, who the suicide rate is crazy on Monday. That's true. That's true. That is true. I'm glad that you mentioned it. And that's why I expressed that. Like, why work at a position that you hate? Create what you want. Like I said, I created the podcast. I wrote the book. I'm not an expert, but I did it. But so if you want to find that position, you know, also you don't have to be an entrepreneur, but if you want to find that position, build that career, contact me because I will help you find those, you know, find those, uh, that position you want, get those uh, the multiple job offers. It's time to to create that, create you and get going. Yes. Yes. And you know what? I got to correct you real quick. You are an expert. And the reason you are an expert is because you did it. Yeah. See, if you wouldn't have did it, you wouldn't have been an expert. Because you did it, now you are the expert. There you go. There you go. People are waiting to be something. You can't go and say that you married until you get married. Yeah. You know, you can't be an expert till you do something. So you'll never be, well, I don't think I've done enough yet. Well, that's true. What you're doing is how you become an expert. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have that mixed up. So, but you are expert now. I mean, you are doing your thing. You have authored. You're looking at the second book. You're moving forward. You're continuing to grow. And uh, could you just, for the audience on Author Spotlight, could you just give some important piece of advice to those millennials, to those baby boomers, Gen X, whoever out there who's listening about if it's writing a book or just pursuing a, a, a big goal, what could you share with them that could be beneficial for them moving forward after hearing this interview? Stop talking about it and be about it. You know, like I said before, like you've been talking about writing a book for so long, you know what? We hear that story multiple times. Stop being a broken record. Or you talk about a certain position, your career. You know what? Just get to it. But yeah. if you don't have information, go find out. Contact Darren. You know, ask an expert. Yeah. So stop talking about it and be about it. Stop complaining every single day and get to work. That's it. That's hey, it. Hey, you heard what my man Jose said. Jose said, get to work. That's what you got to do. You got to get to work and handle your business. Once again, I am so honored and privileged for you to take time out your busy schedule. If anybody heard the interview, you got a lot going on, but you always find time for your boy. I want to tell you that I'm just humbled to be able to know you and have you as a friend of mine, uh, as, you know, as a confidant. And even though we're both busy, we have a lot going on. I just want to tell you that, you know, I told you so. I told you that you were the one. I told you, man, I know you thinking like this right now, but, man, you are going to blow up. Watch what I tell you, man. And you're doing it, and I'm so proud of you, man. God, I'm proud of you to see all that you're doing, how you've been used as a vessel to touch people all over, man. So I just want to say congrats, sir. It's Thank you. to come, and I appreciate the opportunity of just being able to interview you and have you on the show. So thanks so much, Jose, for blessing us today, man. Thank you for having me, Darren. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And I want y'all to remember that this is the year for your new book. So if you need encouragement, if you want to share your story like Jose did, you can reach out to me and my staff at self -publish, letter in 30 dayscom or you can look out for our other shows that we have going on, whether it be the Author Spotlight, the podcast, self Publish in 30 Days on Stitcher or iTunes, or our new show that will be coming out called The Power of Story. So thank you so much again, Jose, for coming on. For each and every one of you, you know you can reach out and tune in to our DMP Enterprises, to our page, our YouTube page, to catch all the shows that will run on at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time every Sunday. So thank you again, Jose, and I thank each and every one of you out there who tuned in for this show. Yeah.
All right. Y'all have a good one.